What's going on? This is Full Throttle Freedom, and today I want to show you how to replace the front brakes on a motorcycle. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to briefly talk about brake pads for street riding. When it comes to street bikes, brakes can be separated into three main categories, sintered, semi-sintered, and organic. Each of these three is going to have its own set of pros and cons. Sinter pads, also known as metallic brake pads, are going to be your best performing pad, but they're going to come at a cost. They're also going to be your most expensive. On the other hand, you're going to have organic brake pads, which are a little bit less expensive, but you might sacrifice some performance with that. And then right in the middle, you're going to have semi-sintered, also known as semi-metallic brake pads, which are just going to be your middle ground between the two extremes. What you'll see in front of me is a few items that you want to grab before you start. First of all, get yourself some brake pads. I decided to go with the EBC EPFA Extreme Pro Center brake pads. These guys have a double H designation, which is really interesting. H represents the highest level of friction a pad can give. And then the double H means that the pad retains its level of friction when hot or cold. Next, get yourself some brake clean, brake specific lubricant, ideally silicone based, a wrench and the bits that you need, some measuring tools if you'd like to inspect the old brakes, a torque wrench, and I'd highly recommend getting yourself a service manual specific for your bikes so that you have the torque specs, procedures, and any service limits as well. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove your caliper mounting bolts. Okay, next you're gonna wanna loosen the brake pad pins. Just loosen, not remove yet. Okay, and then you're gonna to wanna to fully remove the caliper. Okay, and we're gonna carefully take this off of the rotor. Okay, and then you're gonna fully remove the brake pad pins while making sure to hold the springs in place so that everything doesn't fly apart. Okay, and then let's remove the pin entirely. Okay, and then everything just snapped out of place. Now you're gonna to wanna to remove the spring here. This guy, make sure to save this. Okay, and then you're just gonna to wanna to remove the old pads. Okay, and same thing for the other set of pads. Okay, and I highly recommend grabbing something to set the caliper down on. That way the weight of the caliper isn't completely suspended from the brake hose. So I'm just gonna use a bucket here. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, and that's both sides. So I'm gonna set this caliper down as well. And let's go check out the old brakes. So this is from the left side of the bike and these are from the right side of the bike. Okay, so we'll just pick up one. They all look like they're pretty even, but when we're, when we're looking at these, we're just looking for pretty even wear all the way around. And so these still look pretty good actually. So I'm actually gonna hold on to these as a backup. But if you take a look, so if you just grab a, a ruler, this one, it looks like it's about three millimeters. The service limit is one millimeter. So these actually still have a little bit of life left, which is why I'm gonna hold on to them just in case, because you never know. 
Okay, and just for just for kicks, why don't we grab one off the right bike, right side of the bike as well. Okay, so this one is looking like it's about just under three as well. Okay, another thing you might want to do while you're here is check your rotor thickness as well. So I have a digital caliper. If you have a micrometer, it's even better because you can get an isolated point on the rotor. But I should be able to get a good enough reading with the caliper here. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it down, make sure it's all squared up to the rotor. Okay, and then when I pull it off, it's giving me about 5.78 millimeters and the service limit is going to be 5.5 so we're still good we're still in the proper range okay and I'm going to pick another point just going to spin the wheel a little bit pick another point just so that we have a couple points of reference okay we'll say right there tighten it down okay, pull the caliper off and this one's about 5.85 the normal thickness for the caliper is anywhere between 5.8 to 6.2. So these have a little bit of wear, but they're still looking pretty good. Okay, now it's time to clean up the calipers and the hardware and the rotors as well. So grab yourself some brake clean and we're just going to spray it all over. Okay, and I got this one cleaned up as best as I could. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but just clean up a good amount of the gunk that you can. Okay, just kind of clean in the little crevices here. Clean the pistons the best that you can and just uh, really try to get it cleaned up. Okay, it's also a good idea to clean off your rotors as well. I'm also going to take a little bit of time to clean up the old hardware as well. Okay, now it's time to lube everything up. So I have some silicone based brake lubricant, I'm just going to add a little bit to my finger here. I'm just going to lubricate along. In here. Okay, and then we're also going to add a little bit of lubricant to the back of the brake pads. Very important that you do this on the back and not the front, otherwise you're not going to stop. Okay, and I went ahead and finished up the rest of the brake pads. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to check out these gloves because I really don't want any of that lube getting on the friction material or the rotors. Okay, what I'm going to do before I continue is, so when we push the pistons out, it's actually going to cause the fluid in this reservoir to, to raise up just a bit. So I'm just going to suck a tiny bit of fluid out using this turkey baster. And I'm just going to leave this in my brake bucket. Okay, we might want a little bit more. And we'll call that good. Okay, and now we're going to carefully push out the pistons. Okay. 
Okay, and you want to push them out as far as they can go. That way the new pads have lots of clearance over the rotors. Okay, and I'm just going to check to see the level. So it already, here I want to show you, it already moved back up almost to the upper limit. So uh, we're just going to watch it on the other rotor and see how we're doing on that fluid level. So I don't know if you can see that really well, but the, ro but the pistons are pretty much pushed back as far as they can go, all four of them. What we're going to do now is we're going to start putting everything back together. Okay, so we're going to start with the brake pad. Okay, we're going to get that lined up and then we're actually going to take the guide pin and we're going to start pushing it through so that everything's lined up. Take our pin and get that in its place. Push the pin through a little bit more. Make sure that we do a good job to ensure that the friction material is facing the right way. Okay, we're going to line everything up. Okay, and once you have everything lined back up, you're just going to take the pad, pin, and screw it in so that things don't come out of place again. Okay, and you can see everything is back in and aligned. Okay, and now that we have everything lined up, we're going to reinstall the caliper. Okay, and take extra care here as well to ensure that everything goes in correctly and that nothing is cross-threaded. Because the last thing you want is to cross-thread a really important bolt like this. Okay, and I'm actually going to take my gloves off here just so I have a little bit of extra grip for getting this back in. Okay, and I think that's as far as we're going to go by hand. Okay, and we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side of the bike. Okay, and now everything's hand tightened down. Okay, and the second last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna torque everything down to spec. So on my 2004 Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R, all the caliper mounting bolts are gonna be at 25 foot-pounds. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, and the brake pad pins are gonna be set to 11 foot pounds. So let's tighten those down as well. Okay, let's take a look at my work. Okay, so everything went in straight, which is good. You can see those clips are facing the right way. All of my brake pads are facing the right way. The friction materials towards the rotor, which is very important. Okay, everything's torqued down to what it should be. Let's check the other side. Looking pretty good. Okay, and the very last thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you finish up is you're gonna to wanna to pump the brakes to ensure that those brake pads are flush against the rotor. So that's what I was talking about with the brake fluid. We're gonna use some of that to push the brakes back to where they need to be. So what you'll find is when you first pump the brakes, it's gonna be very squishy. It's gonna come all the way down actually. So you're just gonna keep pumping and that fluid's gonna go through. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now it's starting to tighten up a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna keep squeezing. Okay, and now the brakes are functioning how they should. So I'm able to achieve a full brake lever. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna check is to make sure that the wheel spins freely and that the brakes are operating properly. So let's just give this a spin. In case there's a little bit of brake noise, that's pretty normal on a sport bike, especially with these floating rotors. You just want to make sure that you can spin the wheel freely and that it's not slowing the bike down or grabbing those brakes. Okay, let's test out the lever. So, boom, it stopped that front wheel instantly. So, that's what you want. Let's check it out one more time. Great. Okay, and as far as the brake fluid level goes, we're pretty much bang on. You can see that we're right between the upper and the lower limits. But I'm going to add a little bit of fluid anyways, just to make sure that we have some fresh fluid going through there. I use this Motul RBF 600 factory line dot for fluid. And so this stuff's going to be really good. Okay. And we're going to call that good. Finally, let's be sure to secure that reservoir cap so that we can complete our job. Now that you've successfully completed a brake job on your motorcycle, please enjoy and make sure to ride safe.